Hello and welcome. One of our biggest projects on the property is the barn. There is a lot of work to be done in the barn, including an upgrade to the area we use as a pantry. This used to be the tack room that held saddles and bridles and other horse-related equipment. It also has the electrical panels. Since we don't use the barn for horses, the room has become a pantry with our old fridge and a deep freeze and some old cupboards and a shelf. This room is not in great shape. We wanted to clean it up and make some additional storage space. With the pandemic happening, we'd like to do fewer shopping trips to avoid public areas. Having a larger capacity to store canned and dried goods, as well as cleaning products, will help reduce the trips needed to the stores. With more space available in the pantry, we can even move some lesser used items from the kitchen down into the pantry and clear up some much needed space in the house. Because the pantry's in the barn though, we have to be mindful of pests such as mice and rats that might gnaw through the cardboard, plastic, or even wood. All the food items need to be stored in glass containers or metal or in a sealed cupboard. The current pantry is dark, dank, and dirty. I could just make a shelf and fill it with cans and jars but this room would still be in terrible shape. The current location for the fridge and freezer are not very functional for us. The fridge is right up against the wall and the door opens on the wrong side. I could probably flip the door to open the other way. Many fridges are set up to do that, but then it's still too close to the wall and there's nowhere to put anything down while you load the fridge. So we're gonna move the fridge and freezer to a new spot. Clean it up a bit and throw some white paint on the walls to brighten up the room. I'm also adding some brighter lights to the room some 6,000 lumen, 6,500K LED garage lights. The lights thread into a normal light socket and they put off a lot of light. You can also direct the lights with the adjustable panels. This should really help brighten up the room. There's a bit of junk in the room and some old battered shelves on the walls. So we cleared out all the junk, removed the shelves, did some vacuuming and sweeping, then started painting the walls white. The walls are this really old wood paneling and are peeling and cracking all over the place. One day, we want to insulate the entire barn, but that won't be for a while. But when we do insulate, we'll pull all the wood panels down from this room and insulate it and put up something nicer. For now though, we just want to make it look better and have more useful storage space. So I tore out the cupboards and the old shelf in the corner to make space for the fridge and freezer. And the new shelf will go where the fridge and freezer used to be after it's cleaned and painted. With this corner clear, I added a couple of coats of paint and then move the freezer and fridge into their new spaces. Now I can clean and paint the walls behind the old location for the fridge and freezer, as well as the rest of the room. Now that the room is prepped, it's time to add a shelf. I did some work on SketchUp and came up with this design. I wanted it to be quite large and hold as much as possible. If we end up filling it with heavy canned goods and jars, then it better be strong enough. I've made other shelves in the barn, and they're built with 2x4s and plywood like this one will be. But they're built in a more basic way. The screws are visible. The main shelf support is the broad side of the 2x4, so usable shelf space gets reduced. To make the shelves lower profile, I turn the 2x4s on their face and use pocket holes to hide the screws. A shelf built in this way is not as strong as the other way, so for something that spans this space, I've added a middle support to shorten the shelf length. And I can stagger the height of the shelves to have more storage options. The finished product did not end up having this exact shelf spacing because we looked around at what we had to store and some of the shelf heights ended up being adjusted. Now I have my design, so it's time to head to the shop and start making the first cuts. I broke the shelf down into modules. There are 12 shelves and three leg modules. I started cutting the 2x4s for the shelves. The shelves will be 32 inches long by 18 inches wide. I set up a stop block and cut the 2x4s to 32 inches.
I set up another stop block at 11 inches and cut the 48 pieces I need for the shelves and for the cross pieces on the legs. Each of the 48 11 inch pieces will have four pocket holes. A hundred and ninety two pocket holes later, I was ready to cut the main leg pieces. Six two by fours at seven feet long. I have what I need for now. It's time to assemble the shelves. First I sanded all the tear out off the ends. I'm sure it's time to sharpen my chop saw. Then I clamped them together with positioning square and added some screws. The legs are assembled just like the shelf frames. I only added the top and bottom cross pieces for now. The rest will be added when the shelves are added. Now I have a dozen shelves, minus their OSB cover. For that, I'm using salvaged wood from the old chicken coop. They've been stored in the woodshed and are covered with webs and dust. And they were once part of a chicken coop, so you can imagine what else they might be covered in. So if I want to use them for pantry shelving, I'm going to sand them down and paint them as well. I cut all the OSB to fit the shelves, but I don't have enough material to do all of the shelves unless I add two pieces of OSB together. If a shelf has a seam, then you could get some sag if you overload it. But in this case, the shelves are short enough and their support structure is strong enough that I can get away without any sag in any of the three shelves that have a seam. I started the sanding inside the barn, then realized this is going to get extremely dusty in the shop. So since it was nice outside, I set up a sanding and painting station outside of the barn. I also did a quick paint test on the materials to see what looked better. Our choices were either white shelves and blue legs, or white legs and blue shelves. The blue looked a lot better on the OSB, so we made the shelves blue and the legs white. I painted all the OSB and tried to find places to put the shelves to dry. They ended up everywhere. I painted the assembled legs, the shelf frames, and all the cross pieces that will be added during assembly. I realized I'd left out one step before painting. I needed to add some pocket holes to the sides of the shelf frames so they can attach to the legs. I could have done this before painting, but after is fine as well, since you won't really see the underside anyway. After the paint dried, I added the OSB shelves to the 2x4 frames. The frames and the OSB did not line up 100% perfectly all the time, so I used a flush trim bit to match the OSB to the frames. And on the shelves that have the seam in them, I used the flush trim bit to cut off the extra. I could have used a skill saw to get it down close and then trim it, and that would have been easier on the router, but I did the messier way. Now I have all my shelves assembled, but I need to paint the edges of the OSB that I just trimmed with the router. I did that off camera and then started working on the final assembly. Each shelf gets six screws that attach the legs, three pocket holes on each side. With section one assembled, I pull it off the table and move it to its place in the pantry. The second part of the shelf will be added to the first while it's in place in the pantry. The floor of the barn is not even close to level. In fact, it was intentionally sloped from the back left to the front right so you could clean the stalls and the water would all flow to the one corner where a drain was installed. So to build anything in the barn, it'll either have to be shinned or built to fit its space. If the shelf ever needs to be moved to another spot, then I don't want odd length legs. So I built them all the same and added some shims. The first part is in place and leveled. Now I can start adding the second half of the shelf. I used some spacers that I cut to 12 inches to do most of the shelves. 12 inches seems to be the right height for how we want to use it, but these can be set to whatever height works best. And each side can have variations on shelf height to accommodate whatever you want to store. 
Now the shelves are done, it's time to stock them up. Some things to keep in mind when storing food, even some dried goods and canned foods do have expiry dates, so keep an eye on your supply. Clear containers allow you to see what you have and how much is left. Baskets and metal containers look nice and add variety. The shelf is stocked, the new lighting has been added, the room looks much better than it did before. And we have a lot more room to store stuff. We also have a lot of space left in the room to add more storage solutions. I have ideas for wall-mounted racks to increase the capacity of the pantry. I'll be making videos as I add to the pantry, so stay tuned for that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button as it really helps the channel. If you want to see more of what we're working on, please feel free to subscribe.